Welcome back, Josh here, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna be digging into the different AI models, and there are a ton of them built into Sogni. We're gonna explore how having a different model can give you a dramatically different output, even with the exact same prompt and settings. And we're gonna make some cool stuff. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, since we're gonna be talking about models, let's open up our model viewer and go to view all models. And before we get into any of the details of the different categories of models or any of the models themselves, we need to understand the difference between a base model and the community fine-tuned models. So a base model is like Stable Diffusion 3 here. That's why there's only one of them here. These are the models that Stability AI has just created. So they are the base models. They are trained on massive data set of images and they can generate decent results, but generally you just shouldn't use them because you're gonna get much better results from the community fine-tunes. So the community fine tunes are really the beauty of all of this being open source because people contribute and they fine tune the same model in different ways. So all of these SDXL models that we see here are community fine tunes from the SDXL base model. And because of that, if you know what kind of image you want to make or you're just kind of experimenting and you choose a different model, you're going to get much better results than if you were to just try and do the same thing with a different base model. Now, in terms of the categories, we have five categories of models that are on here. First is Stable Diffusion 3. That's the only one that's on here but again i wouldn't recommend using it it's just you're just not going to get as good results until we get community fine-tuned versions of it we have all of these stable diffusion xl models let's keep scrolling down and we're going to get to our standard models these models are based off of stable diffusion 1.5 2 and 2.1 and again you can always click the question mark to get some more information on it now even though these are based on older versions of stable diffusion they are still incredible because they've had so many community fine-tunes and also these are the ones that support control net so you have much more creative freedom of what you can do with it than you do with Stable Diffusion XL or definitely more than you get with Stable Diffusion 3. Then we keep going down past all of our standard models and we're going to get to Stable Diffusion XL, Turbo, and Lightning. These SDXL, Turbo, and Lightning models are based off of Stable Diffusion XL, but you can get good results with far fewer steps. So whereas if you were doing the regular Stable Diffusion XL up here, you're going to be using 20, maybe 50 steps on them, which takes much, much more processing power. So it's really good if you want to do your final image that way. But if you're iterating a lot, these ones generate in far fewer steps which means less computational power, which means faster and means cheaper. So when you're normally doing the Stable Diffusion XL, you're going to have 20 plus steps. But with these ones, you can get good results in three to five steps is generally what I've experienced. But they also do require more fine tuning and more experimentation to get the results you want. Then going down even further, these LCM models are kind of a similar idea as the SDXL Turbo Lightning models, only these are based on the standard models. So the LCM models are even much faster and cheaper than what you would get with these Stable Diffusion XL turbo and lightning models and these lcm models are fast and they support control net so you can do some really cool stuff with it now let's go back up if we scroll back up let's go back to our standard models and when you open one of these what you're going to notice is that you'll have both this regular model here and then you'll see like a six bit or sometimes there's an eight bit or other variations of it one you'll notice that it's a smaller size so the sogni artist v1.0 generates 768 by 768 pixel images the six bit version is 512 by 512 this is really good if you have a device with less ram and these sacrifice a little bit of quality in order to get much better performance gains. So later on in the tutorial series, when I start going through different workflows, you'll see where I'll use maybe an LCM model or I'll use like a standard model and I'll tweak the idea and I'll use control net to get the image very close to what I want. Then I'll switch to one of these SDXL models to get a much higher quality version of it. So that's kind of a high level overview. You have Stable Diffusion 3, which I don't really recommend using until we get some really good community fine tunes. SDXL does great quality images, but it is a little slower because of that. The standard models are kind of the most versatile models to use. And then you have the lightning models, which are, you know, faster than the regular models. Now let's go back to the top. And when you're deciding which ones to do, the best way I think to find it is to just look at the different categories. So let's say I want a photorealistic model. I'm going to open up the camera and these are all of the photorealistic models that we have. Since I'm connected to Sogni Swarm, you can see the ones that are green are the ones that are supported by Sogni Swarm. If I scroll down, like playground isn't, these two are not. So we want to choose one that is supported. Alternatively, if we were just doing this locally, if we were on our local processing and then I opened it up and view all models again I could still look at the ones that are photographs but then the ones that have the hard drive are ones that are currently installed if you don't have one installed you can always just download it so if I click this one and once we're in here we can see the size of each model the name of each model and the size of the images that they generate so this one generates 1024 by 1024 same with that one this one's 896 by 896 so I'm going to download this model and download it and then it will show progress there but while it's downloading I can actually just go do other things so if I go back to view all models and I do want a photorealistic one I'm gonna choose I'm gonna choose a standard model because the XL models do generate a little bit slower because they are bigger and higher quality so if I, instead of an XL model I just 
I'm just going to go down to the standard models down here and I'm going to choose absolute reality. This one's a pretty good one. Now, anytime you're choosing a model, I recommend reading through what it says here. So in this case, we see this model absolute reality is by the creator of Dream Shaper, which is another model, and it's a photorealistic version of Dream Shaper. And it works best with simple prompts, which is great because that means that it's nice and beginner friendly. And if we want to do faces like portraits, it even gives us some nice tips. If we want to get faces, we can prompt for eye colors, hairstyles, hair color, ethnicity, and all that, even some celebrity names. So it's pretty good at not making a single face if you play with that context. Now we already have it installed. This one is you can see it has the hard drive icon because it is already installed. It's also a model that's compatible with ControlNet because we have the ControlNet icon there. And this one generates 768 by 768, which is great. Now we can close out our model and let's find a good prompt. So I got older man, weathered face, piercing blue eyes, wearing a worn leather jacket, sitting on a motorcycle, desert highway, background, sunset lighting, and close up. And we're doing 20 steps in this one. That's not bad. We got a little bit of funkiness going on with his leg kind of merging with the motorcycle there. But if I were to take out the motorcycle, I suspect we'll get a better close up image. Nice. See, that's much better. But I'm going to go ahead and switch to swarm so that we can move faster from here on out. And then I'm going to also choose four images that will generate each time. Let's connect to the network. Now let's see what we get with four of these. These are pretty good, but I can see that they have too much contrast. They're getting a, a little bit of a CGI look. So I'm going to bring the guidance from 7.5 down to let's try four and see where that gets us. Yeah, that's much better. Even a little bit lower. Let's do three. Nice. See, we're getting much more of kind of photorealistic looking images. But let's see what happens if we take this idea and we do a totally different model. So we're going to go back to view all models. Let's try an art model and kind of see what happens if we try to throw photorealistic images at an artistic model. We'll do Anima Pencil XL, close that and imagine. Now the model has to first initiate because it's loading it into the RAM. There it goes. And you can kind of see that these are already more artistic looking. These are not photorealistic. Now, if I were to change the style here and I change it to, let's say, cartoon and go back, let's see what it creates. So now we're getting really cartoony models. But if I were to keep the cartoon style and switch back to a photorealistic model, we'll click the camera to go back to the photorealistic models and we can try devilish photorealism XL. Let's select the model and imagine. Wait for it to initiate and then it will start generating. And there is always this pause when you're switching from one model to the next, but then if you continue generating using the same model, it's much faster. And we can see pretty easily that even though we have cartoon stylized, exaggerated features, vibrant colors and playful in our style prompt, it's still generating photorealistic images. And that's because we're using a more photorealistic model. So let's look a little bit deeper at the models. I think you kind of already understand that, you know, photorealistic models are going to make more photorealistic images and artistic models will make artistic images. But if we went into our lightning models, now these models can be a little bit touchy and they can be a little bit kind of not glitchy, but a little bit finicky to work with. So they're not necessarily great for beginners, but they can generate really fast. So again, when you choose a new model, read the instructions here. So we say this is the turbo version of Sogni XL. So it works very well at two steps, one guidance, and then three steps and one, one to 1 1.1 1 guidance. So you have instructions here of how to follow it to make sure that you're getting good results out of it. Let's choose this model. And you can see when I choose any kind of lightning model, the turbo models or the LCM models, the steps and the guidance turn to pink. And that was because these models don't need nearly as many steps and as much guidance. And if you do too much, you just wouldn't get the result that you want. So I'm going to follow what it says. I'm going to say we're going to do two steps and we're going to do a guidance of one or about one and imagine again, we're waiting for the model to initiate. So I can tell that two steps isn't enough. Let's take it up to four steps and I'm gonna bring the guidance up just a tad to like about 1.2. And these are pretty actually decent images for having only four steps. And the nice thing about these lightning models, even though they are a little bit more finicky, is that you can generate really quickly. So even if I was generating these locally on my computer in two steps, it'll go really quickly. In fact, let's test that out. If I switch to local rendering, it's going to switch back to Sogni Artist because that was the model that I had installed because I don't have I don't have this one installed. So I'm going to switch to lightning epic realism. This is a nice kind of realistic looking one. And let's load the model. Now it's loading it into my computer's RAM. Again, looking at the description, it's a fast photorealistic model. We're going to use four steps and a guidance of one. That's great. So let's close this. We have the model loaded into our RAM. I'm going to do four steps and a guidance of one or about one. Close enough. But let's generate with just one image just so we can kind of save time. So this is one image and it'll actually tell me how long it took to generate when it's done. So pretty good. 8.2 seconds to generate a single image locally. So that's the nice thing about these lightning models. Let's switch back to Swarm. 
Now let's open up our model explorer again. Going back to view all models, we can look at ones that are just on Swarm, or if you're running it locally, it'll be ones that are just on your hard drive. What I would recommend doing then is just trying out multiple different models. Even if you're trying to do a photorealistic image and you're not getting what you want, you can switch to a different photorealistic model and get a better result, or at least a different result until you find the one that you want. So the idea is to have, is to know what you want to create and then have a model that matches that. Now I'm going to switch to a really good artistic model. So we're going to choose the art models here. I'm going to find, I know that an Imagine is really good. A uh, blue pencil is a great one. Let's do this one. It's a great anime model. Let's load it. And since I'm choosing an anime model, what I'm going to do is go into the style and I'm going to choose an anime style to make sure that my prompt is matching the model and then I'll get a more consistent and reliable result. Let's see what it comes up with just with that change. And actually, I can already see that we have not enough steps. So I'm going to change this to 20 steps and I'm going to bring the guidance up to about two and then I'm going to cancel it and I'm going to switch to four images and let's try again. Cool. These look actually pretty great. And they're having like this kind of realistic looking anime look. If we wanted a more kind of cartoony, we can always bring our guidance up. So if I bring my guidance all the way up to 15 and then we'll try again. Nope, oh, I overdid it. I can already see that I overdid it. We're going to bring the guidance back down to 10. Nice. These are good. We have some details in the skin still, but now it's getting more of like actually looking like it's animated. I'm going to go ahead and save that one. I like that image and I'm going to pull. I'm going to take close up out because I don't really want it to be a close up and I'm going to put riding a motorcycle added to the prompt since we're not doing a close up. Nice. I would totally watch this anime. <laughs> I like this one, but it kind of looks like his feet are pretty close to touching the ground. So I like that one. This one's pretty rad. If you do want to import your own model, there's going to be a link in the description to Sogni's documentation page, which shows you how to do that. But that's a whole other workflow that we don't need to get into because there are so many models already on here. Anyway, have fun with that. So that's a quick rundown of Sogni's built-in models. Experiment with them, see how they work out for you, and then make sure to join the Discord so you can share your creations with the community. The next time we're going to be tackling photorealistic portraits, which is something that people ask about a lot, so I can't wait to show you that.